If you were wanting to make your Epson Workforce Printer chipless, then stay tuned. You're not going to want to miss this video. Now, the instructions in this video apply to the Epson Workforce 2830, 2850, and many other models that are here up on the screen. Basically, if you're wanting to use remanufactured ink, which sometimes the ink chips don't work with the software on the printer, then you're going to want to go chipless. Also, if you're wanting to do a CISS system, which is a continuous ink system, uh, this is another option that you would have to be able to be chipless so that you could use that system. Now you will need a Windows computer, either a PC or a laptop will work, but you need to have an A to B cable that basically will connect on one side to the printer and the other side will connect to your computer. The website we're going to be using to download the software is inkchip.net. There will be a link to it down below in the description, but once you get to the website, you're going to click on SOFT for software. The page that comes up is going to have a lot of different printer models on it. You're going to scroll down until you find your Epson Workforce printer model. In this case, for me, it's the Epson Workforce 2830. And so that very first download button is going to help me download the firmware that is actually going to go onto my printer. So once I click the download button, uh, it's going to download onto my PC. So you can save the file onto your desktop and then you can open up this file. You're going to click on it. Now you may have to do what I had to do here, which is open up the file, go in there and click on inkchip.net firmware application. I had to extract all. And basically what that did is it opened up a new application and it was on that application that I was actually able to open up the actual firmware file. So here I was able to click in again and here's the application. I'm going to be opening it up and this is the prompt that you're going to come to where you're going to click on next several times all the way through from step one to step seven you're going to make sure that your printer is popping up under the printer model names uh, and this is basically going to add the firmware directly to the printer that's what this software is doing you're going to click on start going to click on yes and you should allow uh, for this to fully go through the process and download a hundred percent by the time this reaches 100%, uh, your printer will restart, and that is basically the entire process by which you will install the firmware onto your Epson Workforce printer. We're not done yet. We're going to come back to the website, and we're going to go to the middle download button, which is the activation. This is a simple application that is downloaded onto your desktop, and once you have that on your desktop, uh, you can open that up, and it will open up a application that has different languages. You can select English, and uh, basically this will allow you to insert the activation code, which you're gonna be clicking on activate online. So now we're gonna go back to the website. Once again, click on buy, and this is where we can actually purchase an activation code. Once you see the section that says Epson and then Workforce Series, you're going to look for your specific printer model. You're going to add this to the cart. And the way to save on this cost is you can actually use a discount code. And I'll be sharing that in just a few seconds. You're going to go to this page and you're going to start this process of purchasing. But before you purchase, go down and click on coupon code. If you enter best printers into this section, uh, you will get a 10% discount. So $3 off, $30. Uh, if you had a $10 purchase, it would take a dollar off. So you got about 10% off and that'll save you some money when you are uh, going to check out your activation code. Okay, so once you have completed the purchase, uh, you should get an activation code through email. And the activation code you can then input into the software. Once you click activate online, you can paste in the activation code, click OK, and it will begin the process of activating the firmware. This is the message you should get when you are successful with going through this whole process. You also want to save the activation code at the bottom, which is actually a recovery code. If it has a bunch of letters and numbers in it, uh, that is actually a recovery code that you want to save uh, just in case you need to come back and use that later on to reactivate. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.